Hello and welcome to American Living Off Grid in Africa. Um, I get questions all the time and so does anybody else who makes these kind of videos. How much does it cost to live here? How much does it cost to retire there? You know, but usually it depends on you. Um, if, if you can't make it in the United States on your Social Security or whatever, then uh, you may want to live somewhere like South America or Philippines or Africa like, like me. Um, but it kind of depends on what you want and what you're willing to deal with and what your goals and all that are. Now, personally, uh, I've been to Mexico, I've been all through South America, and um, I, I just don't really care for it. And uh, the, the language is one thing, um, but it just, it's not for me personally. Now, other people love it, other Americans, other Brits, you know, lots of expats love it. It's just not my thing. Now, I've been all over the world. I've been to the Philippines. I've been to, uh, of course, all over Africa. And the reason I chose Malawi is, for one thing, it's an English-speaking country. It used to be a British colony. So, you know, you can get by just fine in English, just like you can in the Philippines. Now, um, what your cost of living is going to be it's going to depend on a lot of things, but what, what, what I'm doing here is I'm comparing your relative cost of living between Malawi and the Philippines. Because that's the two things I get asked about the most often. Now my retirement home, if you look at some of my other videos, you'll see that it's in Malawi, Africa. And uh, we go there all the time. We go there generally every year. Of course, with this um, virus thing, uh, then we haven't gone yet this year. We didn't go last year, but we're going to go this year. Uh, probably for three or four months, we usually do. And that's going to be uh, our permanent residence when, when uh, we retire. I built a 4,000 square foot, four bedroom house, all brick steel roof, you know, the whole ball of wax, glass windows, everything, uh, with an eight foot high brick fence around the entire property and a two bedroom, two bath service quarters in Malawi in a beautiful, beautiful location overlooking a valley and the lakes right down there. Uh, there's a 11,000 square mile lake. Lake Malawi is right there. And, um, uh, I built that for less than 20,000 US dollars. That's the land, the labor, and the materials, the whole ball of wax. And I don't think I could have done that in the Philippines, especially, I mean, nobody makes stuff out of bricks. You got cinder blocks and you got bamboo and that's uh, pretty much it. Um, people don't build with bricks in the Philippines, which I don't really understand because there's a lot of clay, but they just don't. Now, if you want to rent a house, um, it's going to be about the same. Now, if you're like me and you want to live uh, in the in the village, I don't really like cities. I don't like traffic. I don't like crime. I don't like big cities in the U.S. or anywhere else. So, I myself would rather live out kind of in the village. And... Um, an apartment in either place is going to run you 40, 50 bucks a month for a decent apartment. Um, and your electricity is going to be probably 20, 30 dollars a month either place. And your uh, other expenses, water and whatnot, is going to be about 20 or 30 dollars a month either place. Now, if you're looking at uh, own in a car they don't make cars in the Philippines they don't make cars in Africa so wherever you want to live either place it's going to cost you 
twice as much for a used car as it would the exact same car in the U.S. Because they're just not available. And there aren't that many cars there, so a used one just brings more money because, you know, you got to ship one in 8,000 miles from someplace else. And a 3,000-pound car, that's not cheap. And then you got to pay import duties and all that stuff. So uh, as far as all that goes, it's about the same whether you want to live in uh, Malawi or anywhere in the area of Malawi, Zambia, Tanzania, Mozambique, the whole east side of Africa, uh, it's pretty much going to be the same as, as it is in the Philippines. Your uh, transportation, uh, in the Philippines you got jeepneys and, and tricycles, you know, the three-wheeled motorcycle things. you got basically the same thing in Malawi, except uh, you either sit on the back of a bicycle or you ride on the back of a motorcycle or you have these little minivans that they call minibuses. And a jeepney and a minibus is pretty much the same thing, except the jeepneys are a lot better looking. But, you know, for 50 cents, you're going to go pretty much wherever you want to go, either way, either place. Now, when it comes to, like, food, um, meat, for instance, uh, beef is difficult to find in Malawi. There just aren't that many cows. It's a lot easier to find in the Philippines but most of the expats I know don't really care for the taste of it that you get in the Philippines. And if you want American beef, it's going to cost you, you know, three, four times what it would in the U.S. because it has to be shipped frozen, you know, 8,000 miles to get there. Now, uh, fish in the Philippines is oh uh, it's cheaper than the US but it's it's expensive as far as what the average Filipino makes um, but it's ocean fish now in the Malawi you have Lake Malawi which is an 11,000 square mile freshwater lake it's the fourth largest lake in the world and you can get a catfish as big as you are you can get tilapia you can get all the cichlid class of fish which are like like bluegills and sunfish in the US um, and they're relatively inexpensive now as far as the local person and what they make per day uh, fish is expensive either place dried fish is even more expensive either place but, you know, in the Philippines, you're going to be able to buy ocean stuff like, say, uh, squid and things like that, octopus and stuff, that, and tuna that you can't buy in Malawi because Malawi only has freshwater lake fish. So... Uh, it's pretty much the same as far as, as, uh, that, as that goes. A chicken's going to cost you about five U.S. dollars either place, Philippines or Malawi. Uh, bread is much easier to find and much uh, bigger variety in the Philippines, uh, but it's going to be less expensive in Malawi. You can buy a loaf of bread for 75 cents, sliced uh, wheat bread or white bread, whichever you want, fresh baked. You just go right to the store and pick it up. Um, your prepackaged snacks are going to be about, you know, 30 to 50 cents either place. A Coca-Cola is going to cost you about 25 cents U.S. either place. Um, but what, what you need to consider is your overall cost. I mean, if that's the purpose of watching this video is to uh, decide which one's going to be cheaper for you. I know people in the Philippines whose budget is, uh, you know, $350, $400 a month. Uh, they get by okay. I know people in Malawi who get by just fine on $100 a month. But it all depends on what you want for your lifestyle. And, of course, it depends on how much money you have. Now, your Social Security in the U.S. Um, 
is very difficult to survive on, say, $1,000 a month, which is what a lot of people who get Social Security, that's about the average of what they get. You're not going to be able to get by on that in the U.S. That's going to be tough. Uh, now, that'll, that'll set you up fine in the Philippines or in Malawi. Um, and you'll have, you know, a couple hundred dollars extra to put in the bank every month. I know people who talk about how much it costs in the Philippines and how, you know, your budget should be thirteen hundred, fifteen hundred, two thousand. I I just don't understand that because, uh, you know, if I'm paying forty bucks a month for an apartment, what do I need the other fifteen hundred dollars for? I I don't understand. Unless you want to go out, you know, partying and drinking and chasing women and. Chasing women's expensive. I don't care where you are. <laughs> Women ain't cheap, buddy. That's just all there is to it. Now, um, your overall cost for food, for me personally, it costs me about half for uh, my monthly budget in uh, Malawi, what it does in the Philippines. And uh, there again, I don't eat a lot of fish. Uh, so, you know, there's that. But the the chicken is about the same. The goat meat, which I eat a lot of, is about the same cost either place. But you, you're, say, say I want to buy a mango, okay? I can buy one in Malawi for five cents U.S. You get 20 of them for one American dollar. Um, just because there's so many of them. And uh, vegetables, uh, bananas, all that kind of stuff is, is way less than 50% of what it would be in the Philippines. Um, things like breadfruit and that kind of stuff are, are tough to find either place. And so they're expensive because there aren't that many of them and there aren't that many customers for them, so they're expensive. Now, uh, if you're talking about... Um, vegetables like beans and carrots and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you're in the villages, it, you're going to be able to find people who grow that stuff. And, you know, they live on $10 a month. So what, whatever you pay them, they appreciate and it's cheap. So that's going to be about the same too. But, but I'm telling you, in my experience... What I spent, what I actually took out of my pocket and spent, is about 50% for food in Malawi as what it was in the Philippines. Now, uh, I lived mostly, spent most of my time in Cebu and Cebu City and Southern Cebu and uh, up also some time up in Makati and Manila in that area up there. Uh, and of course, one, once you get in the cities, everything's more expensive. Anywhere you go. In Malawi, you know, the long way, everything's expensive. You buy charcoal, it's twice as much as it is out in the village. So you just have to decide, okay, this is the amount of money I have. And this is how I want to live. And then after you've done that, then you can decide which way you want to go or what area you want to live in uh, they both have fantastic weather they both have rainy seasons they both have dry seasons they both have mosquitoes uh, they both have malaria so you know it's just a choice you have to make now as far as the the lifestyle goes that's a part of a lot of people's decision too it's not just the budget not just about the budget um, if you're driving, if you feel like you have to have a car, uh, it's going to cost you a lot of money either place to buy that car. And then your insurance is going to be a lot more than you think it should be too. But the biggest problem you're going to have, uh, especially in Malawi, is if you, they have roadblocks all over the place. And basically the reason they have roadblocks is because they want to make sure that you have insurance and your car is inspected and all that stuff. Now, the reason they want you to have insurance is because the insurance companies are owned by powerful politicians. 
That's why you have to have insurance. Otherwise, they wouldn't care unless you had an accident. And the, the politicians, the powerful politicians, don't pay the insurance claims anyway. I know people have been waiting for, for years after an accident, and they still haven't got paid yet. I know people who have rented cars, who own car rental agencies. And when a car gets wrecked, they just fix it themselves and forget about it because there's no point in turning it in on the insurance. There's too much corruption. You're never going to get it. You're never going to get that money. So you, you, you just have to understand that. It doesn't make any difference whether you like it or whether you don't like it. That's how it is. So if you're going to live there, you just have to accept that. Now in the Philippines, when you come to an intersection, whoever has the biggest car has right away. It doesn't make any difference what the law is. It doesn't make any difference whether you like it, whether you don't like it. That's how it is. And if you're not willing to live with the way things are, then don't go there because you're just going to be in a lot of trouble. Wages. Um, in the Philippines, what you have to pay somebody to work for you is going to be three or four times what it's going to cost you in Malawi to get the same kind of person to do the same kind of work. Um, a bricklayer, for instance, costs you about, uh, I mean, an experienced bricklayer is going to cost you about a dollar a day in Malawi. And three to five dollars a day in the Philippines you know uh, you just have to take that into account especially if you're going to retire and you're older and you can't do a lot of stuff like you used to do you're going to have to pay people to do these things and wages are just higher in the Philippines than they are in Malawi it's just that simple uh, another thing if you want to build a house in the Philippines, the only way an American can own the house is if you lease the land. You have to rent the land because you can't own land. You can own a condo because it's part of a big building and all that. But if you want to actually own the land, you can't do that in the Philippines if you're an American. You'd have to renounce your citizenship and do all that stuff. And, you know. People don't want to do that generally. But in uh, Malawi, it's easy. You want to buy a piece of land, you just go talk to the owner and work out a price and pay him and get the chief to approve it, which is, you know, hand him 10 bucks and he'll approve anything. So, uh, you know, Americans, I own land in, the, in Malawi. Uh, and it's an easy thing to do. So to me, that's a huge advantage. Now, uh, Marriage and divorce and all that stuff is, is completely different in Malawi and the Philippines. In the Philippines, divorce is illegal. It always was. Uh, you have to get a special dispensation from the Catholic Church, and you have to prove that the person was not in their right mind when they married you and all this kind of stuff. Um, and a woman can just leave, and, and if you have the house with her, uh, she owns the land. What are you going to do if she just leaves? See? Now in Malawi, if you want the land, you buy the land and it's yours. Uh, now in the Philippines, they tell you that the age of consent for sexual things is 18. But you can go to any bar and find a 15, 16 year old girl and, you know, it's technically, technically illegal, but bottom line is nobody cares. Uh, you're not going to find strip clubs and titty bars and things like that in Malawi. They're just not there. So, I mean, if that's the kind of thing you're looking for, uh, and you go to Malawi, you're going to spend the rest of your life looking for them because they ain't none there. Um, now, the other thing is, as far as the lifestyle goes, uh, You'll, you'll see a lot more uh, crime in the Philippines than you will in Malawi because in Malawi, they're really rough on criminals and uh, they just don't tolerate it. And so you don't have near as much of it. People still do steal things and people still get killed. But 
I mean, Chicago is 20 times worse than the Philippines or Malawi, and that's just fact. So uh, if you're trying to decide which way, which way you want to go, uh, best thing to do is just go there, go to Malawi. Uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of expats online um, that you can connect with when you get there that'll kind of help you, you know, uh, with your traveling and plans and all that kind of stuff. Malawi is only about the size of Florida, so it's not uh, it's not that big a thing if you want to tour the whole country. It only take you a couple of days, but uh, and the Philippines is seven thousand islands, so you got to go you know island hopping, and it takes you a lot longer to explore the Philippines than it does Malawi. Um, and our thing in Malawi, if you want to go and watch elephants and lions and whatever, they're right there. So you, you know. The basic idea of this video was to compare the costs and cost of living of uh, Philippines and Malawi. Now, I know there are a hundred other people making videos like this, and they're going to tell you in the Philippines you need $1,500, $2,000 a month. You know, nothing against them, but I don't see it. When I was there, man, I couldn't have spent $500 if I wanted to a month. It just, I, I just don't understand where they get those numbers from. Now, I can understand you need a safety fund, you need an emergency fund. Yeah, yeah, sure you do. But, because uh, in case you happen to have to come back home for a funeral or you have, you know, cancer or something and you don't want to be... Uh, in a foreign land, you'd rather have it taken care of in the U.S., you can do that. Um, but as far as your monthly expenses goes, uh, I can go to the, to the lake, Lake Malawi, which is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the most beautiful places in the world. That's why my house is there. I mean, if you're going to live out your years in some place, it might as well be some place you like. And I've been everywhere, and that's where I like. So uh, I can go to a hotel right now on the lake for $3 a day. All I have to buy is my food. The, you know, utilities and all that stuff is paid. Now, um, your things like Internet are much easier to find in the Philippines, and, and your Internet's better in the Philippines. It just depends on what how what kind of lifestyle do you want and what are your goals and what things are you happy with some people you know they want to live in a big city they want that nightlife they want all that stuff they want a grocery store across the street i don't care about any of this stuff i want to live out where there are fewer people and everybody knows me and i know them and you know that's all i care about that that's what makes me happy I want to have a garden, I want to have chickens, I want to have goats. Um, you can't really do that in the city. And uh, so that's that's why, one of the biggest reasons why we chose Malawi. But the bottom line here is if you have $300 a month uh, plus whatever you're comfortable with to put in an emergency fund, Malawi is easy to live on $300 a month. Uh, in the Philippines, only if you're out in the villages. I would say, in my estimation, it's going to cost you 50% more to live in the Philippines than it would in Malawi. But you get a more modern place uh, one way of looking at it, let's say the Philippines is a third world country, and then Africa, most of the countries in Africa would be fourth world. That's a good way of looking at it, in my estimation. It kind of gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. There's, there's more modern things. Uh, in the Philippines, if you have money, you can buy anything you want. That's not so in Malawi, because 
there are a lot of things you cannot buy because they're not there to buy. There's nowhere to go get them at. Unless you want to, you know, fly to South Africa and buy it or something. You're just not going to have it because it ain't there. So those are the things you need to worry about and think about when you're comparing uh, living and particularly retiring in uh, Malawi or in the Philippines. Um, now, if you want to leave some comments below with other questions, uh, I've spent a lot of time in both places. I have family in both places. I have friends in both places. I can pretty much answer any question you might have. Uh, right now, you cannot fly into the Philippines unless you're a Filipino national or the spouse or child of a Filipino. Uh, you can fly into the, to Malawi. This much I know for sure. I know that because I have tickets. And I tried to get tickets to the Philippines, and you can't. At least not right now. So anyway, uh, thanks for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe. There's going to be lots and lots more videos as soon as we get back to Malawi. Thank you for your time.